Hi, my name is Joe Miller. I'm an award-winning professional tutor specialising in finance and economics here at The Profs. Over the past five years, I've helped hundreds of students get into one of their top two university choices at master's level with a 97% success rate. In this video, I'm going to discuss five quick tips on how you can perfect your application to LSE's Masters in Finance and Economics course. Before we get into the tips, I want to just run you through some background information on the course that is really important to consider. First things first, while it sounds similar to other Masters at LSE, like the Masters in Finance or, the, or even the Masters in Economics, it's not. This is LSE's most academically rigorous finance Masters, and this is intended for students who want to pursue an academic career afterwards. Let me be clear, this is therefore not for students who want to be investment bankers or management consultants. This is intended for students who want to pursue a PhD after their masters. If this isn't you, I suggest looking at one of LSE's other finance or economics masters programs. Another quick point to mention is, the entry requirements for this course are particularly strict. We'll discuss GMAT and GRE requirements later in the video. Um, and moreover, the success rate is very low. The acceptance rate is around six or seven percent year on year. So this is an exceptionally competitive master's course, even by LSE standard. Let's get into the tips. My first application tip for this course is to consider whether this is the right one for you. As per the background information I've just provided, there are lots of different finance masters at LSE. You have the Masters in Finance, the Masters in Finance and Private Equity, the Masters in Accounting and Finance, uh, you have the Masters in Finance and Risk, and various other Masters in Economics or other social science subjects. Like I said before, this is intended for PhD students, so your application needs to be full of research, the research you've done in the past, and the research you intend to do in the future. If this isn't your career goal, or if you've not done a bachelor's degree that has involved lots of economics or finance research, then there's a very good chance you won't be able to put together a strong application for this course. Please think about this early on. I've had too many students come to me in the past showing me personal statement drafts, showing me their application, and we end up having to completely change it and apply for a different course. Please, please, please consider this before you begin your application. My second tip is to understand the GMAT and GRE requirements for this course. LSE is a little bit unusual in that course to course, there are various different entry requirements when it comes to additional tests like the GMAT and GRE. These can sometimes lead to a lot of confusion. So let me simplify this for you with the MS... Well, so let me simplify this for you with regards to the MSc Finance and Economics program. If you do not currently study in the UK, you have to sit the GMAT or GRE for this course. If you currently do study in the UK, you should sit the GMAT and GRE if you are not on track for a first class degree, or if you think you could score very highly in the GMAT or GRE. In other words, my advice to clients is, you are only exempt from the GMAT or GRE in this course if you have a strong first class bachelor's degree in the UK. It is true that even with a 2-1 from a British university, you technically don't need to sit the GMAT or GRE. But in my experience, helping a lot of students apply to this programme and even discussing this with the LSE admissions team, it's quite clear that without that first class British degree, you are going to really struggle without the G GMAT or GRE here. With regards to what they're looking for in the GMAT or GRE, it's less of an overall score, although you should be aiming for a high score, at least 650 on the old GMAT um, and, and you know, 615, 625 and above on the new GMAT focus. But that's really not the focus of LSE in this course. The focus is on the quantitative section. You want to be ranking in the top 90th percentile in the quant section on either the GMAT or GRE. With that in mind, I move on to application tip number three. 
you must emphasize your quantitative skills throughout the ap application, both on your CV and in the statement of academic purpose. I get the vast majority of my clients to dedicate an entire paragraph to their quantitative skills using their undergraduate degree, specific modules, specific grades, specific textbooks to substantiate their quantitative skills. This is easier for students from, say, a STEM background or an economics or finance background where, where they've studied at a well-known university in the UK and it's very clear that they have suitable numerical skills. However, if you're an international student, this isn't always clear from your transcript. And LSC need to see that you have strong quantitative skills in order to give you an offer for this course. Skills to really emphasise are statistics, if you've done it, econometrics and applications of statistics, and then also calculus and linear algebra. These are prerequisites for the course. You should show evidence of these throughout the application. My fourth tip is to dedicate an entire paragraph in your statement of academic purpose towards research. If you go on the school calendar page for this course, you'll see that paper four is a structured project. This is essentially a 6,000 word dissertation at LSE. LSE want to see what your research proposal is, and I recommend you review my video on how to write a great research proposal for tips on that. Moreover, they want to see how you situate this research within the Department of Economics and Finance. So I recommend looking at research groups, looking at faculty who could supervise this research and substantiate your research goals, your research interests with what you've done before. One of the big misconceptions when students ring me or, or, or approach us here at the profs is they say, I've, you know, what is a good research topic? Or they say, you know, can you give me a research topic? Or in this day and age, they even use ChatGPT to try and generate a research topic. This is rubbish for an application because what makes your research topic strong is what you've done in the past. I don't know what you've done in the past. ChatGPT certainly doesn't know what you've done in the past. So you need to look at your body of research that you've studied during your undergraduate degree. And then you need to link that to a research proposal that you can situate within the departments at LSE for your master's structured project. That connection is really important and is what distinguishes a strong application from a weak one. Application tip number five, Building on from my previous tip, please do your research into LSE as an institution. It's not, good, it's not good enough for you to say, I want to study a master's at LSE because LSE is the best. You should never mention a ranking or this kind of anecdote in your application. What you should instead do is thorough research into the economics and the finance departments that teach this course. I would check out the research centres. The Financial Markets Group and the Systemic Risk Centre are huge research centres at LSE. Look at the research that PhD students are currently doing at LSE. Look at the research that professors are currently doing at LSE. Try and draw parallels between that and your proposal for the structured project. Adding this kind of information, making these kinds of connections, again, is what's going to differentiate your application to another student's. I repeat my point from tip number four. You simply can't do this in a top-down way. You can't do this using Google or ChatGPT or, or even just getting someone like me to give you a, a research topic. You have to start bottom up. What have you researched during your undergraduate degree? What have you worked on, maybe on internships or on research assistantships? And then how can we build a research proposal around that that fits the department research at LSE. I hope you found these tips useful and enjoyed this video. There is of course a lot more that goes into an application than simply the content of this video. So if you need help with your applications, please do not hesitate to get in touch with the information on screen now. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. If you leave a comment, we will do our very best to get back to you quickly. And as always, best of luck with your university applications.